All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Kitchen Table Wargaming a Battle Report. Nir Nirinids? Nirinids, that's not a word. Tyranids. <laughs> I was thinking that we're using new Nid rules, and I come up with Nirinids. That's neat. Tyranids, using the new rules, because, you know, why not? Everybody has them. We'll pretend that's a fact. Uh, versus my Grey Knight. Um, yeah. Here it is. This is Tyranids. This is 2,000 points. You know, as far as we know. Um, and like I said before, we are going to play with the new ninth rules for them. Um, this is such a crazy list. This is a spearhead, correct? Yes. That's how spearhead we're running it. So it's a spearhead. So you got two exocrines. They yes, just point at things and they die. They're really fun. I've had that experience once already with the new ones. Then you've got three Screamer Carnifexes. Screamer Killer is the actual yeah, name? Screamer three, Killer. Three squads of Scream Killers. Yeah. Three with the red bases. Three here with the green bases, and then you'll have three here with the blue bases. That's that's nine in case you're counting and not counting. I don't know, not paying attention. Plus, these cool little dudes get to drop down and then they run off by themselves. So it's I don't know. It's pretty silly. Uh, we're gonna have a good time with that. If you don't know, Screamer Killer Carnifexes, uh, especially Behemoth, right? Because it's still mm -hmm. Behemoth. Um, they have abilities to go from a strength six all the way up to a strength eight on the charge. Uh, and one of those is from an adaptation. So what it does is uh, you take adrenal glands, you oh, get a plus it. one strength, yes. plus one movement, and then once you complete a charge, our charge, or heroically intervene, yep. you go up another strength. So it brings them up yeah. to strength eight. Yeah. So you're looking at 11 attacks, yeah. <laughs> hitting on threes, <laughs> strength eight. It's amazing. Uh, and the damage is uh, three, the damage right? Is two or, three. or is it just two? I think it, it I might remember. have gotten bumped down because of how many attacks they got bumped up to. I would love it if they did. <laughs> uh, while he's double checking. Strength three, yeah. Yeah, no, it is, yeah. So they're brutal, and he's got nine of them because why would you not? Um, and before you ask, yes, he's no dummy. He's taking the, what is it called? The. Um, I've. Uh, is it the adapt? It's not called adaptation. There's so many new terminology things. You can basically give a like a you can trade chapter up, trade out your bonus. adaptation. Yes, uh, it's a, that's it. It's uh, biomorphologies. Yes. So I'm going to be trading out the uh, reroll charges for mm -hmm. the reroll charges is fun, but when you hear this one, territorial instincts, monsters have obsec. Yes, I'm crying little tears. And if the monster has more than ten wounds, I think it is, mm -hmm. they count as five models. Yeah, so all these little ridiculously hard to kill Carnifexes are all going to have obsec. Uh, they all di have damage reduction still. They're one of the few things in the book that just naturally has that. They're like Dreadnoughts. Uh, same points as Dreadnoughts. They don't have as much shooting output, but they've got 11 attacks on the charge. Yeah, you heard that right. Um, so this is going to be a hoot. I don't, yeah, it'll be fun. We got a Trigon Prime. He has a couple of upgrades. He has the ability to auto wound infantry. Is that yes. right? In uh, melee. So he's going to be running the Seer, uh, Seer Hive. Um, with the toxin sacks. Yes. Um, basically, as long as he hits infantry, um, he's all automatically wounding. Um, he's also going to have the warlord trait to reroll his hits. Um, uh, I believe it's called heightened know. senses. And he's uh, what, 12 attacks, I think? Yeah, it's yeah. about 12 attacks. <laughs> he also gets the ability to fight first, which is mm -hmm. only handy if he you know charges in right. and then continues to fight. Yep. If he continues to fight. Yeah. the If you haven't looked at the leaks, the new Tyranid stuff makes them very lore. They feel very lore relevant now. Like, tons of attacks this dude. He also has the a crazy bio-rattle or coiled serpentine body or something that makes him a minus one to hit. Yeah. To hit. It's basically, um, a, I'm a minus one to hit because I'm a snake. Yeah, and it's it's cool. It's appropriate. It really I love is. it. I don't, I mean, I don't love it. But you know what I'm saying. Like, it's super fun. I really, really enjoy what they're doing with the rules. I'm terrified of the rules, but I enjoy the, the route they're taking. Uh, this is the Malice Scepter back here. Um, he can, for an action, give a minus one strength to weapons that are targeting. Is it him and things within six of him? Yes. Is how that works? So, uh, so it, it's basically protection. Gonna, yeah. It's basically just going to reduce strength by one for anything yeah. within six inches. Uh, he's also got Psychic Overload, so any of his warp tests that hit seven... Uh, mm -hmm. automatically do mortal wounds to anything that's within 12 inches. Cute. Uh, uh -huh. Another thing I don't like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the Hive Tyrant. And he's got the cool Relic Venom Cannon that is a damage 5, I believe. Yes, yeah. strength 12. It's uh, absurd. Minus 5 AP, 5 damage. Uh, Shard Gullet. Shard Gullet. So if you haven't played against that or if you haven't heard about it, that's a thing to watch out for. I played against it once, and it will remove everything, basically. It's... <laughs> pretty cool and he's hitting on like twos i think yes. also so it's like 
the dude shoots really well, scary damage. Um, and he's the warlord, as you saw. Um, are there any other warlord traits with him? That uh, just adaptive uh, biology, which oh, gives him the five up feel the no five pain. Five up feel no pain. Yeah. So there you go, guys. This is two thousand points. Um, it's gonna be bonkers. It's uh, I think it's super sassy. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun with this, and we'll uh, show you the Grey Knights list next. Okay, here we go. Two thousand points of Grey Knights. If you've seen the last battle report, you've already seen this list. So there's that. I did make a couple of little small changes. It's two patrols, so I have two squads of the Strike Marines there um, to make the patrols legal. I have my three characters. So the Warlord is the brother captain. He has the Curace for the plus one to the save and the five of Feel No Pain. He also has the Foretelling of Locust, the upgrade points for that to redeploy three units in the beginning of the game. And I did switch out one teleporter off a of Dread Knight for him to have a Thunder Hammer because, or Nemesis Demon Hammer, excuse me because it seems more appropriate and better for smashing monsters. Uh, the Tech Marine, he's just doing Tech Marine-y things. The Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight will be this guy here, and he has the Sigil of Exigence for the once a game redeploy, if he gets targeted for shooting, and the once per game three up and vulnerable save. Two Nemesis Dread Knights in the back here supporting, they are the Psy Cannons and um, Silencers. The dude without the little shoulder brackets is the one that does not have a teleporter. Then I've got three squads of five interceptors each here. I've got one venerable dread knot with the good old uh, heavy plasma cannon and combat weapon. And then I've got three dreadnoughts with the heavy plasma and combat weapon and they all have the storm boulders. And that is exactly 2000 points of gray knights. And um, I was just telling Justin, I'm gonna sit back and do as much shooting as I can before I get chopped up in melee. And he's gonna do as much charging and getting into melee as he can before I shoot him. And we're gonna have a good time and see what happens. So we'll be back in a minute to show you the mission, the board and uh, deployment zones. Get the game started. We have rolled up mission number 31. It is death and zeal. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting so it sets up with you got your objective markers kind of in a diagonal line there and a diagonal line here this one is in his deployment zone this one's in my deployment zone the other four are all out in no man's land this does have the mission bonus if i control one of the ones that are in his territory which is just split right down the center of the board so if i can control either of those in his territory at the end of my turn i'll gain two points same for him and it has a bonus at the end of the game if either I control the one in his deployment zone or he controls the one in my deployment zone, the player that can accomplish that at the end of the battle will get four additional victory points. So, that's the mission bonus rules. There's no sticky objectives, meaning you can't have it, then walk off of it and still keep it. Oh, which means you gotta have to kind of fight for him. That'll be spicy. Um, we're playing these true line of sight, so if you're behind it, it is obscuring. If you're in it, then we can shoot through and see each other, etc. So that will maybe explain some of the deployment choices. For the most part, it's pretty easy. He's got the Trigon not there. It's underground, pretend you can't see it. The blue tape means he doesn't exist. You got Exocrine, you got Maliceptor, Hive Tyrants over there. We got the red squad of killing Carnifexes, another Exocrine, the green squad of killers, and the purple squad of killers. That's it easy nothing to like fuss about worry about just um how quick can i set everything down uh for my part i did put everything on the board today i've got two interceptor squads back here strikes the venerable dreadnought because he doesn't really get to benefit from anybody else's special things anyways then we got three dreadnoughts three dread knights all kind of set up in a way that we can see things sort of depending on who goes first and then i got some characters here so the captain tech marine some strikes and some interceptors there that's it um i'm not trying to get real close and friendly he is playing for stranglehold so this would be a good time to mention the objectives secondaries that we picked um justin's taking stranglehold bring it down and grind them down and i have bring it down purifying ritual and engage on all the fronts those are them we'll see what happens now it is time to roll off and see who is gonna go first and here we go go ahead uh, it's a three, and uh, it's a three. I haven't actually tied anybody on the roll-off in a while. Hmm, that was a two. Oh, I rolled a six. So, I would say that the Grey Knights are going to go first. That makes me sort of happy, I think. Um, we'll be back. 
after Grey Knights, turn one in just a minute. Alrighty guys, Grey Knights turn one is done. Um, move these guys out, screening a little bit. It's not the best screen yet, but I have another turn before Mr. Trigon's gonna pop up and possibly be over here, who knows. These guys moved up, getting a little closer. Um, the captain and, and uh, tech marine bumped up a little closer. This guy was hitting better. Um, that guy's on this objective, this guy's on this objective. That's about it. They both shot into the white-ish Carnifex there on the right-hand side for me. Um, he did cast Hammerhand, and that was that. I did move this whole cluster here. We redeployed these guys to get a couple on the objective. Um, the, this one here and this one here both have Armored Resilience. That guy failed it. This guy also received Sanctuary from the Capitan. I used the teleportation shunt to put these guys up here, kind of try to screen a little bit, and because I could get the, um, where does it go? The card is there. Empiric Lodestone cast onto that Exocrine, so all my vehicles had a plus one to wound against it, which helped. He is still alive. I'm a little bitter. He has three wounds left, but he's still on the table. I was really hoping to get rid of that guy right away in the first turn. And I stayed in the Tide of Shadows, which I suppose, oh, I'm also Brotherhood of Swordbearers. I Probably should have mentioned that. If you know Grey Knights at all, you know that's only possible to cast if I'm sword bearers. I forget and I forgot to uh, announce that earlier. Tide of Shadows. So my grand, the Dread Knights were all out of range actually to shoot at him, or at least my Grandmaster Dread Knight was. He could have potentially done a couple more wounds and gotten rid of him. It is what it is. They also failed their charge. I figure kill it and have them over there. They would have. They're gonna die next turn over here, or they could have died there. So those were my thoughts on that. Um, I did also spend for this guy to have the Shadow of Undying Legends, so rerolling ones to wound over here, which ironically didn't help. The hitting was kind of bad. He can't reroll ones because of the Dread Knight, so he took a mortal wound. This guy here rerolled a one into a one and took a mortal wound. Um, so the shooting from the Dreadnoughts could have been a little better, and maybe I would have done more work on that, but he also made a fair few saves, so props to you, sir. And that's about it. I scored two for a baby engage on all fronts, and I scored two for the mission bonus because I'm sitting on that objective over there. And that's it. I'm donezo. I admit that I didn't cast Purifying Ritual because I was distracted with a lot of Screamer Killer Carnifexes in my face. Um, that's a little embarrassing because I could have, and I should have, and I didn't. So that's the end of my story there. We'll do that next turn. How about that? Um, yeah, end of Grand Ice turn one. Tyranid's turn one is next. All right, it's the end of the Tyranids. Turn one. That guy, the Mr. Exocrine, sat still. He ignored all my cover and stuff because that's what they do if they sit still. And he picked these guys up, which I kind of didn't want to have happen, but I also didn't really want that guy shooting at other things that were over here. So it is a win-loss. I don't know. Um, it is what it is. That's, that's what we'll say. This guy, he did a big advance. He rolled a five on the advance, so he was just sitting on the edge of the objective or just outside of it, possibly. Um, rolled a 10 to charge, so he got into the charge. I saved all but two of the wounds, so I was still alive. And then guess what I rolled? I rolled twos, three of them, three twos. Can't re-roll those, hmm. Well, I mean, I could have for a CP, but why? Uh, so that was embarrassing. <clears throat> he didn't do what he was supposed to do. Um, that, however, with him being alive and having the captain right here, gave me obsec. He has obsec, so we can test this, which means he did not score the mission bonus points, but he did score Stranglehold. These guys are all on those objectives. Surprise, surprise, three Screamer Killer Carnifexes can kill five Interceptors. I don't think anybody saw that coming, but now you've seen. Um, and it did only take one of them, well, just to be clear. Uh, <laughs> but hey, we tried. Um, so that's what I was getting at. So these guys got Stranglehold. This is contested. Um, this dude over here, the one that did not have Armored Resilience, took all the shooting from the injured car uh, not Carnifex, injured Exocrine, and these Carnifexes, Carnifexi, maybe? I don't know if that's the right term. Those guys did not advance, so they were hitting on th fours, um, but they only got two wounds, and, no, only, yeah, yeah like two it was wounds. two or three, two, two yeah, it wasn't horrible. These guys, because they advanced, uh, were hitting on fives, and we didn't catch it until after I failed all of my saves and was down to, like, one wound left, and then Justin remembered they advanced, and we redid it, and he was alive with much more wounds. So, 
that's kind of it. This is where we sit at the end of this interesting turn. Um, Justin picked up three for Stranglehold. He got three for Grind Them Down because obviously he killed stuff and I did not. And that sums up that turn. So we'll go back into Grey Knight's turn two next. Alrighty, folks. Grey Knight's turn one is over. Sacrificing some more poor little lambs, but these guys are a little bit more protected. They got some Sanctuary going, so maybe if he shoots them, they'll survive a little better. Uh, it did still screen out against Big Ugly in the corner. Um, my Tech Marine did move up just a teensy bit, and he healed this Dread Knight a whole one wound. Ironically, if he could have done two, the Dread Knight would have still been alive. But it is what it is, right? It's all right. It's, it's, it is. I could have given him the Relic to automatically heal three. Maybe I should invest in that, seeing I'm playing all these vehicles now. Probably, probably should. I made a charge with the captain. Um, he whiffed. He rolled four ones and twos. He only had one hit that actually hit the Carnifex. He did wound him, so that was something at least, but it kind of was embarrassing. And I made plays for this guy. He's standing on both the objectives. He was going to charge until my Gate of Infinity spell failed from the Grandmaster. I was going to put somebody back here so that he could charge off into the Carnifex. As it was, the Grandmaster made the charge over here, and he had the honors of finishing him. I finally rolled 11 wounds from two of the sword mighty blows. Normally when I do the mighty blow, I get one and two. So that time he actually killed something. It was great, very exciting. He shuffled forward three inches, kind of just gets him a little bit closer there. Obviously these guys moving 10 and 11 inches, they can still get my captain if they wish. He did interrupt combat, by the way, after my captain did almost nothing to him. The captain took three wounds, two, three wounds. No, he took two. Three. Yeah. And I think I, I ignored one of them. I yeah, you ignored yeah. one, yeah. So, he's still hanging around, but, yeah, probably not good. Over here, uh, all of these dreadnoughts were doing a great job of hitting things. I couldn't <laughs> wound for anything. So, this guy took zero damage. I did kill the Exocrine with the Grandmaster Dreadknight. Uh, no, it was this guy that killed him. The Grandmaster Dreadknight couldn't do much of anything to him. He had a wound left after the Grandmaster. This guy finished him off. So proud. He's the one dreadnought that did a thing. He shot and killed the Exocrine. Then we shot everything else at this one and this one respectively. This guy took more damage from Storm Bolters with Cybolt ammunition than from anything else. That was embarrassing. Then these five charged him. He had three wounds left. We managed to do a single wound to him, and that was it. Over here, we charged into this guy. Oh, and there was some psychic damage that we did, but again, it wasn't a lot from the smites, just a little here and there. Um... This dude is a hero, absolute hero. I was so, so <laughs> crying tears of salt, but still, I piled in to get that guy over the line, so I'm engaging for a baby engage. Um, and then he attacks and drops him to, he dropped him to like- One wound. One wound, yeah. Wound. This guy couldn't do it. It blew my mind. I think I rolled a single wound against him out of all of his attacks, and then he saved it. Yeah. Just One wound. It was just, <laughs> why shouldn't happen like this? Not like this. And then over here, all of them piled in, took another wound off, and he's still there with his, yeah, mm, whatever. Mm. Um, so I did spend the trans, uh, not transhuman, well, it is transhuman, true silver armor. Uh, it hurts to spend those command points, but it did help. I got these two guys left alive, and then the morale trick, oh, it was very scary. So every model killed from a unit counts against your leadership. So I went from a leadership eight minus three boys down to like leadership four, right? Five, sorry. Math is good when you're that flabbergasted. No, um, yeah, leadership five. But I passed, I rolled a two. So proud of me. Um, yeah, that was, that was crazy. So these dudes did not die. The champion Carnifex is right here. Um, yeah, and none of that was supposed to happen. These guys were supposed to be free and causing trouble for them to have to, like, come and chew up, and now they can ignore me, and I was very sad. Um, but that's the end of the story. So I got two for Bring It Down for the Exocrine and one Carnifex that I did kill, which was this one, and that's it. Um, three. Three for Bring It Down. Oh, three for Bring It Down, sorry. Math. Or are you sure? Yeah. Well, three points two total, points. sorry. Two it was two points. points for that guy and one point for that guy, yes. yes so, yep, three points total. All right. That's the end of my Grey Knight's turn, too. I really, honestly, legitimately thought that there would be two more dead Carnifexes over here, either from shooting and or melee or both, and I'm a little sad about that. The rest of the board is kind of the way it has to be right now. Not surprising. That, very surprising. Uh, so that's the end of the Grey Knight's turn, too. 
Tyranid's turn two is next. Tyranid's turn two is ended. Look, I've still got Marines. That's exciting. Um, surprisingly, this guy killed the two interceptors. Not surprising at all. These guys, they charged into the Venerable Dread. They killed him. Um, this guy charged into the Dread that was right here. Killed him. This guy did kill that Carnifex, so hey, I got something. Yeah, yeah, I gotta bring it down. Um, this guy piled in to touch this Dread, uh, so he's stuck in combat. But very neatly cleaned up over on this side of the board. Mr. Trigon popped up right here and looked menacing. But he did actually give this dude the freedom to come over here and cause mayhem over there for me. So that was not bad. Over here, uh, had instant regerts when the captain didn't really kill anything over here. And then he was also very exposed. And he died. That guy, he, <laughs> he split attacks. He put six attacks into the captain. I f what did I fail? Three? Yeah, I think it was like three. Failed three. That's nine damage that went through on the captain. He didn't really shrug all that off. Uh, he real did. Then this guy, I did actually spend a CP to reroll a save, and my three up and vulnerable save kept him alive with one wound. So I was all moaning about it because I rolled like really good sixes or ones. Sixes or ones on the first two Carnifexes that hit him, and then the last guy managed to actually survive. He, in turn, hit the dude that was wounded. So I have killed now two Carnifexes? Two Carnifexes. I think a... it's two. Mm -hmm. And yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm trying here, I'm trying. Um, so that's that. The problem is, he now owns this, because my obsec is gone. And he owns that, and that, and that, and that. And I don't have a whole lot of bodies left. This guy, moving eight inches now, was able to just kind of walk away, and get onto that objective, freeing this Carnifex to come up here. Um, these Interceptors are still alive, because the Exocrine did the shoosting into my rear Dread Knight, and this dude made saves. He failed one. I was super impressed. And then he got shot out by some Carnifexes over here that shot their scree uh, what is scream, it called? Uh, some, some kind of weird. They shoot sound, I guess. And I took another one from that. Um, yeah, Bioplasmic Scream. Yeah, that's a cool name. I like it. It's it's a super strong for... I keep thinking it's a flame ring because it's D6 shots. It's painful. Uh, over here, the one dread knot blew up. This guy blew up. I think he got killed in shooting. Was yes. it shooting? That it was yeah, shooting. it was. Uh, he did explode and did a mortal wound to my venerable who shrugged it. I was so proud of him. Ha <laughs> ha! But then he died anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, so that was the tale of the dreadnoughts. Um, yeah, look. Uh, it's a little rough. These dudes are hard to kill. Um, especially when you can't really do much better than two damage, reducing it to one with most of your attacks. I will say, his two wounds that went through on that Carnifex, I did nine wounds against yes. him. So, the two times he's actually hit with that Mighty Blow, he's done some some work with it. Most but, things. yes. So, that's where we're at, guys and gals. Um, I am down to not a whole lot left to play the game with. And we'll finish out Grey Knight's turn three in a second. But it's probably going to be about over after that. Um, but this has been kind of fun. I hope y'all are enjoying this. These... The, the new NID rules are really flavorful and strong. Um, personally, because I'm losing, <laughs> I have wishes that some things would change, but there's not that much I would change. I really do think that a lot of this stuff is very fun, very flavorful, and I think it's not over the top. I think what I'm running into is this many of these Carnifexes is kind of hurting me a little. Um, so, But it's still... In my experience, um, anytime, I've, anytime I've ever run like minus one damage mm -hmm. uh what usually like does in my armies is my is just one one damage shots yeah billions and billions, billions of one of damage them. shots yeah, that's true i can't make that many saves that is true and this this army that i built the way it's set up right now doesn't put out a ton of shots it's not weight of dice it's more relying on the plasmas to do work and things like that so yeah that's fair um but it's still, these are pretty wild. I, they're they're cool. They're so fast, especially the Screamer Killers are so incredibly fast. And then having 11 attacks on the charge and their strength 8 on the charge, that's bananas. Like, it's really something else. It's fun. It's good stuff. We'll be back in a minute. We'll have Grey Knights turn 3, and uh, we'll show you what I can accomplish. Yeah, give me one turn, and I'll bring you down. ha <laughs> ha It is the end of Grey Knight's turn three. We sat still with him. He purified this ritual. 
the interceptors came over, purified that ritual, or did the purifying ritual. I always say that kind of funky. These guys advanced up. Um, I really needed like another inch on the advance to get two, or I mean three, onto this, but I didn't. I rolled a two, so we're contesting this objective. I did purify the ritual, so I've got four points on that. Over here, this poor dreadnought, he died. Um, he did a smite. And I was so excited because I was like, oh, I've got a chance now. He only had two wounds, but I only rolled one for the D3 damage. So he's still alive with one. Then he killed him, and the Dreadnought forgot to explode. If he'd have exploded, it would have been pretty cool. Over here, we charged in with the Interceptors, charged the Grandmaster. I spent my one command point to fall back and then shoot and charge. So we shot this Carnifex down to two or three wounds left. Two Maybe wounds. two wounds left. Um, charged in. I used the Grandmaster to hit this guy. I did a multi-charge. So he killed that one. These guys killed this one. This guy that was still alive interrupted and killed the Dread Knight. I only failed one save, so if my Tech Marine had healed just a little bit better, that Grand Master would have been alive again, because I healed him up to three, and then those flat three damage wounds, whoo, just perfect. These guys killed him, so it was kind of a fun back and forth, lots of killing and killing and killing. Um, so I got two Carnifexes, he got a Dread Knight, and then a Dread Knot, so we're tied up on the tally there. So all he has to do is kill one more to get grind them down this turn. Um, but we did take this side of the board back, finally. It's been a lot of work. And then we have only four more Carnifexes to deal with. So, I feel like it's going well. Um, yeah, ha, ha, sarcastic. I'm not engaging this turn. So pretty much I got my four for Purify Ritual. I got a few more Bring It Down points, and that is the end of my turn. And because those Carnifexes are obsec, I didn't score any commit, uh, victory points either because I lost my captain, so I lost my obsec over there. Kind of painful. So that is the end of my turn three. Justin will have his Tyranids turn three next, and then um, we'll probably be done after that because um, I won't have an army left, I don't think. <laughs> These Carnifexes are scary. We'll be back after Tyranids turn three. Well, folks, the end of the turn. These guys all moved up. This guy came down over here to where my strike squad was. I lost a couple in shooting. Um, over here, the interceptors lost one, two psychic screen. I think uh, it was the one it was off. Like two of them. Yeah, yeah, well, it was four wounds total, but I shrugged two. So I lost one there. Hive Tyrant said, wow, let's just shoot them with my insane relic cannon because the Exocrine over there one shotted the nine wound Dread Knight. So. That was cute. They did not fail morale, though, folks. These guys are still here, loud and proud, and that's pretty much all they're doing. Um, yeah, they made charges into the Tech Marine. Uh, he made a charge. This was a big brain play. This was a good one, Justin. He charged in first with this dude um, and had enough distance to be able to be within an inch of the Tech Marine but still steal my objective in the backfield there. And then this guy charged in. That guy got stuck out in the cold because his base is too big and he couldn't fit. That guy killed the Tech Marine. That was about all there was to it. Oh, and this guy, with his one wound left, this has been the hero. This guy survived the Dreadnought for like two turns, I think. It was yes, ah, so sad. And the smiting and the exploding, everything. Made it in and killed my poor little Strike Marines. It was impressive. That guy probably deserves MVP from this game. It was huge. Um, that's it. So the game's over. I, I still have models, but there's no way I can actually score points. They're not obsec. This is a hold two, hold more mission. Um, and I can't engage with them. I can't, <laughs> I could purify ritual another turn and get one more point out of that. And that's it. So we've added up the scores. Um, we did go ahead and count it out what it would be in the end. And I would like to announce right here, nine Carnifex has entered this killing field. There are only four left. I'm taking a moral victory for this one because I killed the majority. Yes, I'm going to say it that way. The majority of the Screamer Killer Carnifexes. And I was telling Justin, he needs to make a sound effect for when he charges with them. There's some weird shrieking like... Yes, yes it would be amazing for charging and for their crazy advancing moving 11 inches. It would just be lots of fun. Um, so that's it. At the end of the game, when we tallied it up, as it is now with Nachman, you don't continue scoring, but it was still 59 points to the Nids to 34 for me. However, if you figured out what the score would have ended up being, it was 89 to 34. So 35. You 35, purified. right. I would have purified this ritual, assuming it didn't get denied and I didn't fail it. Ah, yes. I would have. He actually didn't deny any of those. He was denying some of my other stuff, and then this time he would have had two guys in range to try to deny it, so that, that one might have actually got shot down this turn. Yeah, let's keep it. He would have. He's a nice guy. I wasn't going to come back any other way. Um, 
but that was a really cool game. Uh, lots of fun. I hope y'all enjoyed seeing the new Tyranids. I don't know how many people are going to have nine Carnifexes to be able to start off with a new book, but that was wild. These guys are amazing. This guy, I was kind of disappointed, honestly, even though I know he would have been, like, wrecking my Marines. I didn't yeah, really I, get to see him do much. I, I hiked him up, but I was like, that, that's the best thing I could do. <laughs> right, with and then he held an objective, which, to be fair, kind of a big deal. Um, that helped you a lot, being able to move these guys around just to do a little shooting or support casting. And then all the Carnifexes were free to come over and crunch on my guys over here. So, yeah, I mean, it feels like he didn't do much, but he was pretty handy. So we've had some fun. This is a really cool game. Hope y'all enjoy this. Um, the new Tyranids are fun. They're flavorful. It feels better. Like, they, their rules match the models a lot more now, I think. Um, I feel like it's not an uphill climb anymore. No, there wasn't much uphill about this game. <laughs> not at all. This was a good game. It was a lot of fun. And I would love to play it again. I, we were debating a little bit. I think having the shorter, like, spread out board, I guess kind of threw off some of my ideas in my head that I had, but I don't know. Um, this, this is so fast. It only takes two turns to cross no man's land, you yeah. know, and it's once the majority of the Carnifexes are in, you're kind of in trouble. You got to deal with that. And then if you haven't killed the Exocrines already, they're still going to be shooting and picking you off. So is the Hive Tyrant with his wacky gun back there. So that's a really cool list. This is a lot of fun. Having obsec on these little buggers, that was rough, but that makes it worth playing because if you didn't have obsec on them yeah, i don't i don't know that there would be out. much sense yeah i would have scored a lot more on my victory points um but yeah it's really cool well thank you sir i appreciated the game hope y'all enjoy this and enjoy the new nid rules and maybe we maybe some stuff changes between now and when the book comes out we kind of doubt it um so this is fun hope y'all enjoyed it and we'll catch you again soon for another kitchen table wargaming battle reports